Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dr. Adji is, uh, is here. Uh, I will continue on the chapter on uh, zakat on business income. Uh, so, we have actually covered until the um, three objectives here. First one is to understand the type, definition and type of zakat. And then to understand the reason for zakat payment imposed to Muslim. And number three, to identify the, uh, the eight beneficiaries of zakat. Now we will continue on to the rest of the learning objective for this chapter, which are to uh, identify the methods determining the sources for zakat, then identify the condition to be met before zakat on business income to be made, and also understand the methods of calculation for zakat on business income. But before I continue on to the uh, lecture, I would like to ask you one question. Um, so um, I would like to ask you whether um, a an orphan uh, okay an orphan okay in Bahasa Malaysia we call it anak yatim okay uh, does uh, the does he or she okay entitled to receive the zakat money so uh, that's the question that I'm going to ask you um, properly at the end of the uh, video and the lecture so you can come up with uh, an answer uh, of the questions uh, so we continue on the issues uh, of the beneficiary of zakat. Uh, are there eight or seven beneficiaries? Okay, the discussion is that some states in Malaysia have seven beneficiaries since nowadays there are no Muslim or the or captives. So because uh, one of the beneficiaries, uh, uh, we call uh, basically the slaves. Okay, so we want to free the slave, but we do not we do not have slave anymore in 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 the current uh, we call it uh, modern day. Now, however, there are other states which still maintain the number of beneficiaries of eight uh, categories of uh, people. Now, the reason is because it is stated in the Holy Al-Quran that stated that there are eight beneficiaries of zakat. Now, due to that, a record is implied as zakat for those who would like to free themselves from ignorance, from, from jahiliyyah. For instance, zakat paid to people who would like to further their studies. And also, for uh, there are there's some other... Uh, reason that you might want to uh, look into the uh, decrease okay uh, being issued by certain states okay all right and uh, all right now let's look at the condition for becoming an amir so there, these are the condition of uh, becoming an amir so basically an amir must be a muslim an amir is actually the one who actually can collect the zakat money from the people and that must be pious and mukallaf, which means that it can it has uh, ability to uh, to know that what is right and wrong, uh, and a freedom man, not a slave, a fair and just person, and does not come from the descendant of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, so uh, the descendants of the Holy Prophet cannot become namil, okay, uh, and then trustworthy, and is not a blind person, is not deaf person, and also must be a male. So a female cannot become an amir. All right. Now let's look at the methods uh, of to determine the sources of zakat. Okay. There are different methods. So first one is kiyas, wath, anama, binafsi, and mal, anami, and favor the poor and the needy. All right. The kiyas. So a kiyas is actually a method that will be used by the Islamic jurists and scholars in determining the sharia practice if the subject or the case is not mentioned in the Holy Quran or Hadith or the consensus of Ijma. Qiyas is a practice to imply subject with an existing Sharia treatment. So you are actually looking at, it hasn't been uh, occurred before, but in the previous in the previous year, it might be uh, similar right, to that. And so we would like to imply okay, a subject with an existing Sharia treatment. So the use of Qiyas in Zakat is encouraged and it has been widely practiced by the Islamic jurists, for instance, Employment income, okay, uh, zakat pendapatan is subject to zakat because it is similar to gold and silver, okay, silver and gold is actually currency. Therefore, the rate and how are equivalent to the rate of how of zakat on gold and silver. All right, the second one is actually al nama bin nafsi, okay. Basically, this is a method uh, to zakat wealth based on the concept of productive wealth expansion. So those wealth of prot property which could in nature expand or grow by themselves, for instance, agricultural produce such as paddy field, all right, such as paddy, uh, rice, okay, 
uh, will fall under this category of wealth. There is no hold condition to be fulfilled for this type of wealth. Zakat is payable once the wealth is gained and the quantity is enough to meet the uh, nisab, right? So Imam al-Nawawi and some Islamic scholars such as Ibn Abbas, Ibn Mas'ud, and Muawiyah, for instance, suggest that zakat on employment should follow the method of annama bin nafsi. Thus, according to them, zakat on employment income is payable on the day it is received, provided that, it's, it, that it meet the nisab. So the zakat is imposed best based on the method that uh, uh, the method it is gained, and not the type of wealth. Even though the wealth is received in the form of money, so this is al nama bin nafsi. So basically, uh, is based on uh, productive wealth. So once you uh, gain the, the 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 wealth, then you are imposed on the zakat. And then wealth taken from several hadiths, for instance, as narrated by Mu'az bin Jabal, the Holy Prophet وسلم, had instructed Samuel to inform the Yemen people that zakat must be paid by the wealthy people to be distributed to the poor and the needy. Due to this, there is an, uh, there is an opinion that says zakat is payable on all wealth irrespective of the physical form of the wealth. So this is one, uh, another source of uh, what you call it, uh, zakat. Then we have Amal al Nami. This is another method uh, to zakat wealth based on the concept of productive wealth expansion. However, it is imposed on wealth which is gained from property or wealth which could not grow by itself, for instance, like business wealth. So, therefore, zakat is only payable when it meets the how and the nisa. For instance, zakat on business income will only become payable if, if it meets the how and nisa. So, this is uh, Al-Mal Al-Nami is actually the base of the method of Zakat on productive wealth expansion but it is based on the unproductive, uh, what you call it, that, that, that the, the, the wealth or property cannot grow by itself. Okay, for instance, uh, so it must be, it must be uh, grow by, uh, it must be uh, managed by someone. So, so this is uh, Al-Mal Al-Nami. Alright. And then, favoring the poor and the needy. So, this principle is being used by the scholars if there are two reasons from two different schools of thought to pay zakat on the same wealth at the same time. Therefore, the approach is to choose the method that will favor the poor and the needy. For instance, when, the, and when there is a Torah dud, which means argument due to similarity or ambiguity between two wealth, such as should the rate of zakat for money be based on khayas on gold, or he has on silver. So in this case, which one do you should you use? So which one will favor the poor and the needy more as compared to uh, favor the uh, zakat uh, payer? So the jurists conclude that it's better to base on silver since the value is higher and there is no uh, disagreement on the nisab of silver subject to zakat. So uh, for example, red animal for instance could fall under either zakat on red animal, al-saimah, or zakat on business income, al-tijarah. In this case, normally the jury will choose zakat on business income rather than zakat on red animal because it favors more the poor and the needy. Alright. Now let's look at zakat in business. Hadith from Rasulullah as narrated by Abu Daud. Indeed, Rasulullah as asked us to pay zakat from the property that we prepare to sell. So basically, any uh, property that we property or wealth that we prepare to sell that is actually a subject to zakat so all kind of businesses owned by this muslim are subject to zakat right so condition to fulfill the, uh, to fulfill to um, uh, to pay zakat on business the condition that must be fulfilled to be zakat to be subjected to zakat is muslim a freedom person the wealth must be from halal sources this is very important so we cannot pay zakat from uh, non-halal sources and so those activities prohibited against Islam cannot be included in zakat calculation and then it must meet the nisab at the end of haul so the nisab is 2.5% or equivalent to 85 grams of gold and then it must meet the haul which is one year must be from productive property example cash, shares, bond, ending inventory, fixed asset, movable or immovable and a net threat uh, receivable and they must have full ownership of the uh, wealth. 
and then the business subject including donation uh, subject to zakat so exists the intention to be in business so it must be intention the intention to be in the business so so basically that's the hadith saying that all the uh, our uh, our action uh, must begin with the our intention so the intention must be there so intent, intent to uh, be in the business and then there must be the transaction for example the buying and purchase purchase and uh, purchase and selling and so on so the business property is not withdrawn for personal use all right so basic item in a business uh, okay if you look at the this is we have covered on the uh, financial accounting so basically fixed asset fixed asset not subject to zakat income accrued from productive fixed asset is subject to zakat so basically the fixed asset is not subject but the income accrued from the fixed asset productive fixed asset is subject to zakat and then we have current asset based on the value of asset provided in the balance sheet or assessment on the inventory so basically zakat is based on the equivalent value of the asset and zakat is imposed on account receivable if it is assured that the debtor will be will, will pay back if you cannot you will believe that you cannot uh, receive you cannot collect the debt then uh, the account receivable can be deducted from your, your uh, from the uh, zakat uh, zakatable um, assets and then zakat will only be imposed in the year when the debt is collected and then we have intangible asset example shares paid a patent goodwill bond certificate of investment are considered equivalent to fixed asset if they are not traded but held in the purpose to gain dividend so basically if you hold shares hold pattern pattern goodwill and so on but uh, you you don't actually um, um, trade them then uh, but held in the purpose to get dividend then you don't have to uh, pay zakat if the company invested in uh, has already paid zakat does the income is no longer subject to zakat all right and then long-term liability long-term liability to finance run the business is subject to zakat okay capital and shareholders fund paid up capital premium accounts accrued profit are subject to zakat all right now there are two types of calculating zakat on business the first one is a growth model and the second one is a working capital model okay the growth model is basically you take on the owner's equity plus long-term liability minus fixed asset minus intangible asset plus minus with adjustment so basically this is the growth model whereas for the working capital model you just take current asset minus current liability plus minus adjustment all right so the adjustment to be made to the calculation of zakat is to deduct income which are not subject to zakat such as prohibited sources for example you have you gain interest from the conventional banking then you have to deduct that interest amount uh, and then amount uh, which are not fully owned okay such as deposit for utilities okay so when you uh, put on deposit for your utilities that can be deducted your creditors so okay uh, sources that zakat has already been paid and then current asset must be productive thus bad debts absolute stocks depreciation are deducted uh, and then charity funds such as tabung hayrat and education fund charity fund which has the concept of rolling fund is not subject to zakat on the principal amount only ending inventory all right and then those liabilities related to business operation example trade creditors and also payables and then you have to make some adjustment you have to add to the current asset all gift donation paid by the company and then add to current liabilities not related to business operation example reception of debt dividend payable overdraft and financial list so these are the references that you can go uh, uh, on how to calculate the zakat calculation based on working capital for the reading is bahari and hamad we're thinking zakat on employment income and then uh, that's all for uh, the lecture on zakat on business uh, if you have uh, any question then we can actually uh, you can email me at noradli alias usim.edu.my going back to my question during my first uh, uh, slide of first, sec first and second slide I, I asked the question whether an open can uh, uh, receive 
the zakat money right so what's the answer the answer is no because there are an orphan does not uh, include in the eight categories of asnaf that has uh, been mentioned in the quran because an orphan can be a wealthy uh, orphan right but if the orphan okay orphan is actually a poor or, or a masakin then he is entitled uh, to receive the zakat money all right so basically if you look at here the eight categories of uh, beneficiaries there's none here mentioned about an orphan or anak yatim okay so basically if he or she uh, fall into the poor the needy the poor then he can become uh, uh we call it uh, uh, the recipient of zakat money or maybe he's a uh, he has uh, he he's in debt or he is actually uh, uh, want to uh, uh, do some we call it uh, to pursue his study from under feasibility and so on so with that uh, I thank you uh, with the uh, end of this video I'd like to say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh